to do with that because it doesn't even make any sense. I don't even get it really. Um, oh, YouTube, team keep it clean, sorry. I was in conversations. But what's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And after yesterday's pressure presser, because that's what I'm going to call it. I'm going I'm to call it a pressure presser because that is exactly what Lamar did to the Baltimore Ravens. He put that public pressure on them and he did that public negotiating with them. And like I said, I loved every single minute of it. I know so many of y'all did too. And just like me, it was a lot of you guys' favorite Presser, and I can completely understand why. To me, it showed that Lamar not only knows how much control he is, but he is willing to show it too. And he did it in a respectful way. It ain't get nasty. It ain't get petty or nothing like that. But he did it in a respectful way. The media, they tried to get him. They tried to bait him. But he was like, nope, not answering that. We in conversations. I don't know. We in conversations. I don't know. We in conversations. I don't know. So he put that pressure, he did a lack of committing. And again, that's another part when it comes to negotiating. Don't commit. Because if you do negotiations based off of love, because we know he loves the Ravens. And he even said, hey, I, I, I plan to be on here for the rest of my career. That would be my expectation. But he didn't say, I'm going to be here for the rest of my The wording is so important with that. Now, we expect Lamar Jackson to be a Raven. For the foreseeable future but he didn't commit to being a raven for the foreseeable future why because there's no deal in place to have him commit so he put that public pressure on the ravens but anyway this presser um it has something that uh we need to get cleared up about one lamar jackson um my guy roy roy was like hey engraving i ain't letting you slide on this one i'm calling you out my guy Roy commented, he said Lamar never said that he wanted a Super Bowl before a big contract. He said, that's you and the media. So he said, that's me. Me. Team keep it. He said, that's me and the media saying that. Never read or heard him say that. Go Ravens. And I was like, hold up. Where, where, where's my boy Roy coming from with that? Why he coming at me like that? What a, I'm just saying what's been said. But then I was like, hold up. You know what? Let me look it up. Because it was a comment about Lamar Jackson not being worthy. Shout out to Thor, by the way. But it was about Lamar Jackson not being worthy. Him thinking that he's not worthy of a contract before he gets the Super Bowl. And it would be so easy to feel like Lamar Jackson did say that. Because we know Lamar Jackson, the humility level is crazy. And we know, like, he's started off from jump before he even took his first snap, before he even took his first practice, before his first training camp, before he even signed his contract, his rookie contract. He said, y'all going to get a Super Bowl out of me. Believe that. So it would be easy to, to think, oh, well, yeah, Lamar did say that. But then I, I looked it up because I wanted to be sure because I was about to reply to my boy Roy. I was about to be like, look, here goes the link. Here goes the article. There you go. So I looked it up. And... I was kindly corrected because it was not Lamar Jackson that said that he didn't feel like he was worthy but to have getting a contract before the Super Bowl. It was Steve Bashotti. It was Steve Bashotti that said in his interview that he felt like Lamar probably doesn't feel like he's worthy of a contract before getting a Super Bowl because he's so obsessed with getting a Super Bowl. But Lamar Jackson did never, ever say that. He never said that. So I had to make sure that we got that clear. I had to make sure that I cleared that up because I spoke incorrectly on that. So that's my apology. So shout out to my guy, Roy, for kindly and politely and respectfully correcting me in the comment section. I, I appreciate that. Seriously, I do. Um, so, yeah, Lamar Jackson, he never said that. And, and he he cleared that up again yesterday, too. He said, oh, yeah, I, I, he said, I won my Super Bowl. I sure won the Super Bowl. But, yeah, I'm deserving of a contract for sure. And, yeah, I think he is pretty deserving of a contract. Um, something else, too. And we, we spoke on this yesterday. I've been saying all offseason that I, I don't feel like a, a deal is getting done this offseason. I just don't. I really don't. I don't. But yesterday's presser, it changed that a lot for me. It changed that a whole lot for me. Because, the, again, the pressure. Because before, 
If, 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 like if Lamar came on there yesterday and he was like, when they asked him about the contract, I just want to play football. I just want to play football. I just want to try to win. I just want to get better. I, if he was saying those things, then I'd be, oh, okay, cool. All right, yeah, he ain't worried about the contract. If they say Lamar Jackson, hey, are you you going to be at training? Would you report to training camp and would you, would you play week one without a contract? And he was like, of course, I'm, I'm not worried about that right now. I just want to play football. I'm going to be here. If he said that, then I, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they still, that contract, yeah, yeah, it ain't happening. I don't know. But he didn't. He didn't. We're in conversations. I don't know. We in conversations. I don't know. So he put it out there. And I know a lot of media has taken that like, oh, Lamar Jackson, unsure if he's going to hold out a training camp. And technically, technically with the media saying that, because, you know, they, oh, they were waiting on this. one. We were all waiting on this one. But, you know, media was waiting on this one. And they, they looked at little quotes from the presser. And they're like, oh, there goes a good one. Give me that. Oh, there goes another good one. Give me that two. Oh, there's a good one. Oh, give me that three. Because if you can take the quotes and be, oh, yeah, that, that's literal right there. Oh, yeah, he's trying to hold out. But if you, you, that's why a context is so important. And that's just in life, period. Context is extremely important because if you just take bits and pieces, and that's what happens so much times in just life, in society, and just whatever. People will take bits and pieces without knowing the whole story. And that's where a lot of misinformation happens. That's where a lot of misunderstanding happens. This ain't just a football thing. This ain't just a Lamar Jackson media thing. This is a life thing because it happens every single day. We have all, we have all been involved in something like that before where we only get a piece of something and we're like, oh, okay, da, 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 and, and no, 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 no. You got to get the whole thing. You got to hear the whole story to fully understand. But back to Lamar Jackson in the media, we've seen several different outlets talk about him holding out. And it's just, like I said, from what he said and the little pieces that they took, it's like, oh, okay, oh, he, he said that. But then that's why you got to watch the whole presser, the pressure presser, by the way. I, I know what, one guy in the comment section, he said, man, y'all getting too hyped over this Lamar Jackson presser. Y'all too hyped over that. And my response to him would be, no, 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 you're not hyped enough. You're not hyped enough. And again, one of the biggest reasons why so many of us, at least myself, I can only speak for myself, but one of the reasons that I'm, I was so excited over that presser yesterday is because with Lamar, so many times he is very passive. He's, and it's probably by choice, he's very passive. He's very, oh, no, yeah, yeah, it's cool, no problem, no problem. But... That presser yesterday was really like one of the biggest times, especially with the timing of it and, and everything that's been going on. But it's one of the biggest times where he really put his foot down, man. He, he really put his foot down and he really talked talk to the world and was like, hey, I got it. I got this. I got this. I, I am in firm control of this thing and I'm here to let y'all know and show y'all. I'm in firm control of this thing. So again, to my guy that said, we too hyped out. No, no, no. You not hyped enough. We, we not even hyped. We should be even more hyped over this. Especially because it's going to be the last time we're hearing from a lot of these guys for a long time. It's, it's going to be a while. Like I said, yesterday, um, that press, we had to got to let it marinate because it's, it's, it's going to be sitting there for a long time. And the next time we probably hear from everybody is one, if a blockbuster deal is announced... Uh, or two, they end up signing somebody, trading for somebody. And again, that would be a, a blockbuster deal. So we'll see what happens with that. Somebody mentioned, because uh, of course, you know, again, the, the wide receiver talk. There's been some people, some people in the comments were like, Engraven, see, that's enough. All right, that, that's enough. You see, look at the chemistry that our wide receivers got. Hey, that, that's enough of you talking about the wide receivers. No, it's never going to be enough for me. You know that. You know, now, if they start proving me wrong, week one, week two, week three, week four, like, oh, okay, cool. Okay, cool. I would still love for them to have a, a proven guy. I would still love it. I would love it because it would give you that much more quality depth. Quality depth. And not just any guy, though. Just somebody who, like, would really help move that needle that much forward. 
And what are the chances that they can land somebody like that? Hey, who knows? But one point that somebody made, um, it was a really good point, too, uh, about the Ravens wide receivers. Uh, they said with Cooper Cup, I forgot what round he was drafted in. They were like, nobody knew Cooper Cup was going to be what he is. Well, he wasn't no first round pick. He wasn't a second round pick. He was either a third or fifth round pick, one of those two. They said with Stephon Diggs, look at him. He was a fifth round pick from Maryland. Who again? You know, y'all know the story about Stephon Diggs' mom. She, <laughs> she ain't no big fan of Ozzy. But anyway, he was a fifth round pick. Look how this guy turned out to be one of the best receivers in the game. Uh, again, the mommy wanted Ozzy and them to draft him, but uh, hey, it's, 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 it is what it is. Um, Devonte Adams. He, I don't even think he was a first round pick. Look how he turned out. But the, the moral of this story about the Ravens wide receivers was let's see how they turn out. Let's see. Let's give them a shot. See what ends up happening. See what goes down. See what comes of this. See what was what's next. But let's see. And it's like, oh, it, it was a really good point. It's a really good point. You just don't know. You don't know. Because you got a first round pick, you got a third round pick, you got a fourth round pick, and you got a sixth round pick. Again, I told you, I always forget what round James Prochet was picked in. So you got picks all across the board, all, all over the board. But, uh, and then you got your undrafted guys as well. So you got literally <laughs> receivers from every section of the draft early, mid, late, not. And when I say not, I mean not drafted. So they will definitely uh, have an opportunity uh, to prove themselves right now. Um, and again, T. Martin did say the other day, hey, we, we didn't draft the receiver. Now it's y'all time. This shows that, hey, we, we got guys here that, okay, we're going to try it. I mean, we'll see. The, the jury's still out if the Ravens are actually going to do it. Because I'm still like, I'm like, oh, could, could the Ravens really do that? I don't know, man. I don't know, because what they've been trying to do would say otherwise. Because apparently they were interested in a Jarvis Landry. They tried to trade for Jalen Rieger. They wanted to draft Calvin Austin III. They want, apparently wanted to draft one of the top receivers earlier, but people end up taking him in the draft. So that would actually lead me to believe that they want to add to what they have. That, that will lead me to believe that they're not done yet. Um, but, again, the, the jury is still out. So, again, like, like I said, if, if they end up rolling with their young guys, I, I hope that they all end up proving me wrong. Like somebody, somebody else in the comment section was like, um, he was like, Engraven, see, when, when James Prochet and Bateman, when they were talking about why, why are these people doubting us, he was like, they, they talking about you. And I said, hey, that, that's, that's fine, man. Uh, who knows? They might have been. I know I ain't the only one, but I, I'll take full responsibility for that. They might have been, and I would have no problem with that. And because it's it's not even like I always say, it's not even doubt from me. It's just not sure. I would rather have a sure thing along with what we have now. I would rather have that. And then I think I think about a, a quality receiver having adding a guy who just, who we already know what he's capable of. And pairing that with what we have already, that would make the Ravens that much better. I, I don't see a problem with that. That would make them so much better. And, and then you got Mark Andrews, too, and you got the other 50 tight ends that you got on the roster, the other 60 running backs and whatnot. Man, you, you be straight a, a, a plethora of talent. You, you want to diversify this offense, right? You want Lamar's job to be easier, right? You want Lamar to have more options, right? Well, what's wrong with having more options? So many other quarterbacks got more options. That would only make him better. That would only make the team better. Why, why would we not want to make the team better? I just, I don't be getting that. But that's one of the things. But another thing is, I mean, if last, if last year taught you anything, anything, I think it taught the Ravens something because they've done it literally at every other single position. Well, maybe except inside linebacker, but they've done it everywhere else. And they probably not going to be using a bunch of inside linebackers like that anyway. But they, if, if last year taught you anything, anything, 
That is that you can never have not just enough enough depth, but enough quality depth. Quality depth. You can never have enough. Ravens already had Chuck Clark. They signed Marcus Williams. They brought back Geno Stone. They signed Tony Jefferson. They drafted a Kyle Hamilton. Ravens, they getting back Marcus Peters. They're getting back Marlon Humphrey. They uh, brought back uh, Kevon Seymour. Um, they, Eamon Marshall. Whoa, hey, hello. Eamon Marshall. Yes, he is a real person. But he's back there for now, too. What they do, they drafted Pepe and they drafted uh, Davis. And they, even after that, they signed Kyle Fuller. So, like, Ravens, they had Calais Campbell coming back. With Derek Wolf, he was an unknown, but they had Matt Abike. They had Broderick Washington. They had Isaiah Mack or is, is Isaiah McKenzie. I forget my apologies. Um, so they, they had guys on the defensive line. Or they signed Michael Pierce. What did they do? They ended up drafting Travis Jones. And they ended up signing Brent Urban. And then they brought in JPP for a visit the other day. Ain't nothing wrong with that, right? Why not? It's quality depth. It's quality depth. And there is nothing wrong with having quality depth. This is why I continue to talk about it. Because it's the only position. Only position. Ravens got J.K. Dobbins coming back. They got Gus Edwards coming back. They signed Mike Davis. They signed Mike Davis. You still got Justice Hill. They they signed Nate McCrary to the they even they drafted Tyler Beatty. They they kept at and they even got an undrafted guy too, but they added so much at the running back position. Even though they already had a lot based off of just the guys alone that were coming back, they already had so much at the running back position. But what did the Ravens do? No 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 no. Let's add more and more quality. Let's add more. So you see what I'm saying? Ravens already had Mark Andrews. And that's just like, ah, oh, Mark Andrews, one of the best tight ends in the game. And he was the best tight end in the game last year. They got Nick Boyle coming back. They got Josh Oliver. Now there, it was a kind of thin because Nick Boyle's like, ah. And Josh Oliver's like, ah. But then they, they went and drafted two tight ends, two. So they added depth, quality depth there. They did. They, Ronnie Stanley's anticipating coming back healthy, hopefully. Ravens already had Jawan James. Ravens signed Morgan Moses. Ravens, they, they retained Patrick McCary. They already had Tristan Colon Castillo. He could have played center. But what did the Ravens do? No, 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 no. We're going to draft Tyler Lindenball. What did the Ravens also do? No, 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 no. We're going to draft Daniel Falele. They had Ben Cleveland. They got Ben Powers. They got Tyree Phillips. They got Kevin Zeitler. They got a lot of guys coming back. And as long as they're healthy, they would have been better than last year. But what did they do? They still added quality depth. Quality, and it's like you can you could talk about quality depth for every single position. But when it comes to wide receiver, people are like, oh, no, no, no. Now, I remember, we go back a couple years. I think... It was 2000, either 2019 or 2020. I forgot which, which year it was. I feel like if it was 2019, it would make more sense uh, in my head, especially after 2019. But so it's probably 2009. But anyway, it was a couple years ago. And I was saying on here that I just, I, I want, and I, yeah, it must have, yeah, it was probably going into 2019. Um, so before, the whole MVP thing. But I remember saying that I want the Ravens to just roll with their young wide receivers. And I was willing to go through growing pains because we got a new quarterback. He can grow with his young wide receivers. I was like, look, look at what Joe Flacco, Joe Flacco and Torrey Smith. Oh, man, their connection was crazy. But why was it crazy? They grew together. They weren't supposed to grow together because remember, it was Lee Evans first. And if it wasn't for that Lee Evans injury, then... They may we may never see Torrey Smith. Who knows? But Lee Evans got hurt, threw Torrey Smith in there. Boom! First game, three touchdowns against the Rams. 
Oh man, I love that game. I remember watching that game uh, from my grandma's house. On I was watching it from a live stream on a computer. I was like, oh, let's go. Jumping up and down, watching it on a laptop. But anyway, they grew together. So I was like, all right, we got this new quarterback, Lamar Jackson. He's young. All right, let's roll with young wide receivers. Let's do that. And I was willing to go through a, a losing season or a not so successful season just so we could watch them all grow together, just so they could all get through it together. They could build up the chemistry. They could build up the rapport. They could just build up each other and go through it together. I was willing. I was willing to do that. I was like, all right, if the Ravens do that, they roll with the young wide receivers. Hey, cool. No problem. But. And they kind of did, well, they, not really, because they, they, they brought back Willie Sneed. They brought in Seth Roberts. Um, and those guys are still young, too, now. But, so, and, and Hollywood was obviously involved in the offense a lot. Boykin, he, he, he was up, nah, up and down, kind of, um, but not consistently. But I was willing to do that back then. But back then, the Ravens were not, well, we didn't know, because they ended up going 14-2. and two. But going into that season, we didn't know that the Ravens were going to be as good as they were. And going into that, and now I can only speak for myself. Going into that season, 2019, I did not think this was going to be this 14-2 and two team. I didn't think this was going to be a, a team where they won 12 games in a row. I did not think that. So I was willing, okay, let's roll with the young guys. But they ended up being a, a, a contender. Well, regular season, playoff game, they, they got out punching the mouth but anyway they ended up being so much better than what the expectation was because for me there was not much expectation I felt like they could be good I'm like oh man this dude Lamar Jackson he won went seven and one last year and then, yeah playoffs was a little, little rough but I think playoffs are more play calling than anything but anyway the expectation was not there for me going into 2019 now the expectation is there for me going into 2022 season that's why I just would rather them have somebody that's proven as well to add to it because I feel like the Ravens are so close and when you're so close to something yeah you could risk it by chance you, you could do that you could risk it by chance but all, you could also go for a sure thing and most people if they so close to something they're, pro they're probably gonna go for that sure thing and again, not saying that the receivers that the Ravens got can't do it. Not saying that they can't execute. Not, that's, not saying they can't perform. Not saying that. But for me, I would much rather them go into it with a sure thing and the guys that they got. And then something else you got to think about. Especially based off of last year. Injuries. They happen. We don't want them to happen. We hate that they happen, but they happen. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. If Ravens lose even half of one of their receivers, they're not ready. They ain't ready. They ain't ready. So, and again, we of course hope nobody gets hurt. That's what we hope for every single season, for every single NFL team. But you got to stay ready so you don't got to get ready. NFL should just change it to where you could have 90 people on the roster. No, but you know what? Nah, they can't do that because then people will start hoarding players and stuff. They're like, oh, we getting everybody. And Rams will find a way to get every single free agent that there is on the market. But we talk about that later. So this is why I'm so passionate about the wide receiver position. That's why. Those are the reasons why. It ain't nothing against the guys that we got now already, obviously. Uh, and I hope that they do a phenomenal job. Again, love seeing that chemistry with uh with Bateman and Prochet yesterday. My, my guy JT, he said that we he wished that we could have got a presser with with Duve and Tylen Wallace. See if they buddy buddy like that too. Uh, but anyway, so that that that's why I always say that about the wide receiver. That's why I always speak about wide receivers, and I have no problem ever speaking about wide receivers, as y'all know. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. Uh, and. That's that. Happy Friday. Or whenever you're watching this, I appreciate you watching this. I appreciate y'all supporting. Thank you for leaving likes on the video. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for telling all your people about the channel. I love you. I love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. And we out.